From the power of words, we turn now to the power of pictures. We live in a world saturated with images from television and movies to magazines. Today, almost every major newspaper in the country has turned to the full-color photograph to document the news. The photograph has the power to capture history and to etch it into our memory. How does a great picture get made? To find out, we tag along with one of today's premier photojournalists, Jeff Mermelstein. His images have appeared in the New York Times Magazine, Fortune and Life, and other publications. You might not know his name, but you'll probably recognize his photographs. Ugly can be beautiful. You know, Paris is far more beautiful, I think, than New York. But I like New York better because there's a certain kind of craziness. And there's like a neuroses in the air, this the angst. There's a temperament on the street. It's only in New York that you could probably throw the camera in people's faces, at least for me. It's just this endless vat of information. And then there's this energy in the street, this energy that lends itself to be this kind of person that is obsessed with taking pictures out there. I'm part of the whole mess. When I think of Jeff Mermelstein, I think of somebody whose vision is very unique. It's quirky, it's different. He makes a certain kind of picture that nobody makes. I would say with Jeff, you have a photographer who's got a very distinct vision and it's a noticeable kind of sit up, take notes. So if you're going through a magazine and you see his pictures, they are pictures that kind of jump out. There's nothing posed about them. Everything about them is very much of the moment, very much heavy with a certain kind of attitude. Jeff Mermelstein I would say, is an absurdist with a sense of humor. The crazy, wacky, out of kilter, off the handle events of New York life, which flow by us without notice, are picked up by his alert lens. He's apt to steal up and surprise a half-eaten apple on the street. And you see Jeff all the time, and it's interesting because he's very tall, and yet there's a kind of gentle presence. So he's exactly, I think of him, he's in the mold of a photojournalist who can kind of fall back and document a scene without others noticing that he or she is there, and yet he's there, he captures it, he moves on. I'm a voyeur. I'm not asking people if I can take their picture, even if they're on a public stage. I'm, in a sense, stealing something from them without asking them. I, I don't get releases on the street. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, you couldn't do the kind of photography I do by t speaking to the people before you take the picture. And I, I myself feel no guilt with that. And I think some people that are new to the notion as to what street photography is all about, that might be a bit of a, or even more than a bit of a turn off. And it might not suffice as an answer to say that I'm interested in making an interesting photograph. A lot of people aren't going to bite that, but I'm totally uh, comfortable and cozy because I know I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt anybody with a camera. It's, it, it's, it's, it's what I do, and it's my way uh, um, of responding to, to uh, people.